I can burn bridges cause I know how to fucking swim. So do me a favor and fuck off. I was born alone. And I'll die alone. What's up guys, my name's Daniel. Feel free to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. It's completely free, costs you nothing. If you feel like donating, there's a way to do that down in the description. I love to have my back scratched. I like giving free information, but it also feels good to have a little bit returned to me as well. So, I also have a Facebook page if you guys want to check that out, or you have questions, or you just want to join, post your bike, whatever, talk about things. That link is also in the description. I have my PayPal link in there if you want to send a donation, buy me a cup of coffee, whatever. Uh, it also helps support the channel. So without further ado, let's get started. Hopefully I get to help you guys out today. Let's get going. What's up guys? We're gonna cover a range of topics today. Turn my Bluetooth on here. Make sure I get connected to my phone. Power on. Let's see if I, excellent, just connected. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to do some photo shoots today, but I had a subject I wanted to talk about, which is things every beginner rider should know. If you're just getting out there on the street, it's your first time. I've ridden everything under the sun, man. Big bikes, little bikes, fast bikes, stupid bikes, bikes without engines, bikes with engines. <laughs> the only thing I haven't ridden is a bike that runs on jet fuel yet. Someday, someday Y2K, someday I will have my hands on one. Let me get underway. Bike hasn't been on the road in a little bit. That one's out here for sale. Oh gosh, I got so used to the other uh, bike clutch. I'm not not used to this one again. <laughs> Oops, let me turn that down so that's not overpowering. There we go. All right. Take a little ripper here. So, things every beginner rider should know. I think the biggest one is lane spacing, right? Or car placement. So, a lot of beginner riders make the mistake when they first get their bike of shoving their bike up somebody's tailpipe and riding them because obviously most of the bikes you guys will be riding are faster than most of the cars on the road so it gives you this sense of I want to go fast all the time urgency right especially if you live where I live like here in Florida where it's hot a huge majority of the time it kind of sucks because you hate getting stuck in traffic so what do you do you rip through it you beat stoplights you try to stay as cool as possible during 100 degree weather the downside to that is it is extremely dangerous let me explain so I, I'm pretty sure most of you have common sense but for those of you who don't following too close to a car and a motorcycle makes it very difficult to dodge objects on the road so like see that little thing right there if I was 15 feet off somebody's bumper and they were cruising at 40 50 miles an hour I would not have time to react with a 15 foot ratio you would have to have extremely fast reflexes to do one of these maneuvers, right? Which is also extremely dangerous at high speed, okay? To avoid the object. Most people won't avoid the object. They will connect with it, especially if they're that close to the back end of a car, they're most likely going to hit the object in the road. This is very bad, uh, especially on highways. I see a lot of these big trucks carrying concrete, rocks, all that kind of stuff. And what ends up happening is, up the road ahead of you way up the road you don't know it's there but what ends up happening is concrete slabs break off and fall onto the road now the cars they're not going to have an issue with it unless they're huge pieces of something they're not going to have an issue with it they'll just kind of hit it and their tire will you know make a loud noise and they'll go over the top of it but if you hit it you're going to die <laughs> let me emphasize on that again you most likely will wipe your bike out and your chances of survival are pretty slim especially if you're traveling at highway speeds and you don't have any gear on so is it smart to travel too close to the back end of a truck you need to give yourself proper distance between cars more 
I would say more distance than you give an average car if you're inside of a car. Your braking time is nowhere near what the car can do. The car can slam their brakes on, they'll stop way faster than the bike will, which is why they say speed kills. So, if I'm on the highway, I'm giving the car in front of me almost 15. If I'm going 70 miles an hour, I'm giving them 12 to 15 car lengths in between me and them. So if I have to dodge something, I have time to react after it goes underneath their car. If I'm up their butt, I don't have time to react. I am hitting that object and I am going down, right? Let's say there's a shredded tire in the road. Bam, makes connection with your front tire, down you go. A rock, a pebble, somebody's cooler, whatever. You don't have time to react if you're up the butt of the car in front of you. This is how bikers get killed, often. It happens a lot. You have to be smart about what you're doing. You have to be paying attention when you're out there on the roads, you know? So, that's my number one. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is when to use your front brake. This is a huge mistake I see beginners make massive i don't know why they don't really teach this too much in the course but man when you take the motorcycle course which i've done numerous times i also took the defensive driving courses and i took aggressive driving courses as well for sport bike riding and they were the only two courses that actually taught when to use the front brake correctly um i think they go over it slightly in in your basic test that you you know your three-day motorcycle test but they don't cover it enough and this is why I would say probably a good 80% 80, 80 of laydowns happen with beginner riders and that's because they slam their brakes on when they're in a turn. Now what is the problem with hitting your front brakes hard when you're leaning the bike at an angle like this? Well, I'm going to hit them hard right here, watch what happens. Ugh. All of the weight did what? It went straight down to the front tire. So imagine that it's being supported right now because you're upright so because i'm upright it's applying all of that pressure right to the front tire but because i'm upright the bike stays upright but if i'm at a lean and i do the exact same thing if the bike is leaning in the corner and the tire's bent and i'm coming in like this and i do that exact same thing what do you think happens all of the weight goes to what the front tire which if you're at a lean transfers all of that weight straight to the pavement the bike wipes out while you go into the turn, right? Huge beginner mistake. This happens very, 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 very often with beginner riders. When you're going into, when you first, let's say this, because I do use my front brake in the turns, but I'm also a weathered rider. I know when to tap it, how hard to pull it. Like there's a bunch of things involved, okay? But when you're a beginner rider and you're going into a turn, start using the rear brake first. The rear brake is gonna be your best friend when you're in turns because pulling the front brake is danger zone until you get more used to your bike, you understand how it's gonna do things, you understand how much pressure you can apply to the front brake without the bike going down. There's a whole bunch of things connected to that. So the best thing to do as a beginner when you're going into turns, if you have to hit your brakes, is use your rear brake. Don't push it too hard to the point where it locks up because then you're dragging your tire and it's gonna slide out from underneath you as well. But start applying force. You can feel the bike start to slow down, right? Don't just hammer down on the rear brake because then it's going to slide into home plate and you're going to wipe out. Tap it. Tap it into the turns and then start slowly applying more pressure as needed. Okay? That is just, I, I'm sorry, but I, I see it so often. That's why all these little beginner bikes have all this road rash on them, especially when it's raining. When it's raining, it's even worse. I noticed that <laughs> beginner riders use their front brake when it's raining even when they think they've gotten comfortable with their bike when when it's raining and they tap it because they're used to doing that now because they've got a little more road time on them when it rains i will barely use my front brake at all barely when it rains i just won't right i and if i do it is literally just tapping tap 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 i will not crush the front brake doesn't matter what bike i'm on i won't do it right you have abs which is nice but abs is only really great when you're going in a straight line so if you're going straight your abs comes on the tire is going to go dit, 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 dit. it's going to jitter but if you're at a turn and you do the same thing and the abs kicks on it's going to wipe out that's just what's going to happen the roads are slick they're wet it's like being on ice for the first 15 or 20 minutes when the roads are wet so your, your rear brake is going to be your best friend i'm using nothing but rear brake right now to stop 
right? I could use front brake, but it's easier to change your rear pads uh, than it is to do your front ones on most bikes. So just wear, wear your rear brakes out. Then you only have to replace one set of pads. Right? Make your rear brakes your best friend. <laughs> That's the advice I can give you. So, all right, let's get on to number three. I'm just cruising around. Well, I'm sitting here at this light, and this is one I should be following myself, but I live in Florida and it's 100 degree weather all the time. You will normally find me uh, wearing gloves, sleeves, and pads, uh, helmet, stuff like that. Um, I don't really wear dual layered clothing though, and I will normally be caught riding in shorts because it's just way, way, way too hot. I know people are gonna say dress for the ride or dress for the slide, not the ride. I get it, right? I've had my accidents, I understand. At this point though, I would rather slide, rip off some skin than completely overheat every single day to the point of exhaustion on my bike. So I, I think it makes me a more dangerous driver if I'm overheated and just wanna constantly go fast because I think it, I think it brings up my aggression levels with traffic because I just want to stay on the move if I'm too hot. Um, when I can breathe and I'm comfortable, I'm a lot less itchy with traffic. But for you new riders, no matter what, this is my suggestion. Ride with clothes that you can slide on. Jeans, leather, pants, whatever. True riding gear, motorcycle stuff, all of those things. If, if you know, dude, motorcycle gloves have gotten so cheap at this point. Make sure they have a skid pad on the bottom, multiple skid pads if you can find them. Gloves are about five dollars on Timu, eBay. I mean, you want sliders that way, if you tip over or you fall off, you can grind down the knuckle plates and and come to a skidding halt if you have them. Or you can be underneath and until you have an opportunity to push real hard, flip your body over, and get onto your knuckles. That's what these are for. They're knuckle biters. That is 100% for hitting things. Uh, sliding like get proper gear it doesn't matter cheap gloves at this point actually do better than no gloves at all so if you're gonna chop on eBay Amazon and Timu for your gloves go for it these are these are eBay gloves they were ten dollars I've had them for years they work great um, they just they they've put up the test of time they were literally like five dollars I've had probably 30 bikes personal bikes and I've used this for each one and as you can see they're still in one piece. So, proper riding gear, big plus. Get yourself a helmet. I don't care what anybody says, ride with a helmet. I'm serious about that, ride with a helmet. Don't play around, ride with a helmet. Helmets are cheap enough. You can find them on Marketplace for like 30 and 40 bucks used. Get yourself a helmet. Sometimes you get real lucky, 10, 20 bucks for a helmet. Just make sure it's DOT approved. Wear proper riding gear. I cannot stress that enough as a beginner because you're going to make doozies. Let's see if he waves. We gotta teach you guys a motorcycle wave. Well, fuck you too then, bitch. <laughs> Number four, lane positioning. Always give yourself an out. Because there's a medium right here and I can see that it extends out, I'm good, I'll stay right here. The moment this becomes blocked off and I can't intersect into the middle lane for any reason at all, I will switch lanes over there so I always leave myself an out. You always, always, always want to leave yourself an out. Give yourself an out, trust me. Trust me, trust me. I wanna be able to get up on the sidewalk or bail the bike if I have to for any reason at all. That needs to be available to me at all times. So, I, like I said, the curb's right there. I don't give a shit about the bike. The bike means nothing to me over my life. I will let the bike eat the curb. I will jump and take the fetal position and roll off into the bushes. Damn, the bike be damned. If I can save it, I will, but the bike be damned. I would rather save my life than worry about whether I'm gonna have a motorcycle afterwards. There are people that love you and care about you. Make smart decisions, folks. I try to ride when I can see the person in their mirror, okay? Lane positioning is everything. If I can see dude's face, then I know dude can see me. If I can't see his face, he cannot see me, okay? Always be looking in their side mirrors. If they can see you, if you can see them, they can see you. If you look in their rear view and you don't are in their side mirrors and they and you can't see their face reflection back at you, they can't see you. It's, the, it's literally that simple. If you can see them, they can see you. Always remember that. That means Buddy, if he doesn't see you, could just slam his brakes on. He'll never know you were there. You go craning into the back end of his car. End of story. Lane positioning is everything when it comes to motorcycles. 
save your life be smart I don't I don't get into all that oh you got to ride staggered you got to do this you got to do that nope I ride when I can see buddy in his mirror see right now I can see him in his mirror and I can see him in his mirror I know both of them if they looked in their mirror right now could see me if I look over and they can't see me guess what I'm going to move my position I will get the hell out of the way quickly and avoid a circumstance that I don't need to be in it is literally that simple if you can see them they can see you you're not sitting in a blind spot okay number five the scary one you're new to riding you're just getting out on the road you're scared you don't want to jump out in traffic here's how you pull out in traffic comfortably when your clutch is in and you're in first gear slowly start letting out until you feel the bike start to move right as you figure out where it's at i know that my position where it starts to move is right here once i get to there if i start letting out a little bit more the bike starts to move your fingers will remember that exact spot so when i get to right here i know the bike's going to start to move so when i go to give it gas i'll start off giving it gas i'll slowly let out until i get to that spot and then i'll let the clutch out all the way and the bike will jump into gear easily you're out in front of traffic pull it in shift let out give it gas clutch management is everything learn your clutch well you're going to need it at all times it is your lifeline on the road your clutch disengages and engages the power to the bike you need it constantly for everything it is part of your life make your clutch your best friend that means take your bike out and play with the clutch until you can learn how to take off fast through each gear once you get up into higher gears like i'll kick it down right now there's fifth i used it to downshift now watch i'm not going to use the clutch to shift up what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to put pressure on the gear as you become a better rider you'll learn this i'm going to put pressure on the gear right and all i'm going to do is as soon as i start letting out of the throttle i'm just going to pull up and it's going to go gradually and smoothly without the clutch you ready three two one boop right into gear six gear achieved pow right i don't have to wear my clutch out prematurely but as you become a better rider you learn these things right you'll be able to do that kind of stuff after third gear you don't need the clutch for upshifting you always need the clutch for downshifting right but these are things you'll learn right now clutch management is your best friend learn your clutch before you go out and try to ride get into a parking lot learn where your clutch activation points are a lot of beginner riders get severely hurt because they don't learn their clutch before they go out they're just excited they just want to go out and tear up the road and have some fun you know so they end up making that mistake well i am almost at my property now i don't care buddy you can drive as fast as you want to i'm going the speed limit you clearly are not everybody else is going the speed limit but you so if you want to race around go for it this is my turn I hope, uh, I hope this information helps you. These were my top five beginner mistakes and how to solve them. <laughs> I, I really, I, I want you guys to learn how to ride comfortably and be happy and excited to be on the road. I don't want you scared to be on your bike. I really don't. I want you to go out and enjoy yourself and be comfortable. To do that, learn simple techniques. Learn those simple techniques and you will have a great time. Great time. Alrighty guys, I will catch you on the flip. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, consider joining my members group, man, if you like my information. I've got tons of content like this for you guys, years of content. I've been made over 2,500 videos and you know, I've got, I've got tons of content about motorcycles, everything you could need to know. And if you don't, drop a, drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see. If I can do it, I'll make it happen. All right, I'll catch you guys on the flip.